please subscribe to this channel if you're not already and click the bell icon to stay up to date with every video we post on this channel please also like and share this video as it helps us perform well in the youtube algorithm thank you and enjoy the video Glory, hallelujah. Jesus Christ is Lord. This is another wonderful, wonderful day that God has graciously given unto us. For truly it is God who makes made us. It is God who gives us the opportunity to face each and every day. And every day we find ourselves in this world, we should be happy. We should rejoice. We should be glad. We should glorify God. Because truly it is an opportunity to honor and to glorify the name of Christ Jesus. Today, we are back to the book of Revelation. We have been studying the book of Revelation from Revelation chapter 1. And truly, when we speak of the book of Revelation, it is not an isolated book. Actually, it is a book that was written directly by the Father. And it was given to His Son, Jesus Christ, who sent and signified it by His angel to John, His servant. So this is the revelation of Jesus Christ. It is Christ who is revealed on how things will be. And truly this is the whole uh, revelation of the person of Christ. For it begins from heaven, the time he went to heaven, and we begin to see the church age. And we have gone through the church age all the way from chapter 1 to chapter 3. And we are still there currently in the church age. But we know very well, according to the uh, prophetic word, that there will be this last week of Daniel, or the seven years of tribulation that are coming, which are revealed in the scripture when God literally pours his judgment. So in those seven years, will there will be the opening of the seventh seal, the, the, the sounding of the seventh trumpet, and the pouring of the seven vial of these great angels. And that will bring the end of the wrath of God and also of the takeover of this kingdom of this world to by the Lord Jesus Christ. And we, we are just about to go to chapter 19 to see how Jesus Christ comes and he takes over this world. And we'll see how the, the, this whole force, the power that have been, will be destroyed and the kingdom indeed will be restored to the Lord God Almighty, who is the rightful owner. We saw Jesus Christ taking that scroll in chapter 5 and beginning to open it because that is where everything was hidden and now it has been laid bare on how it will happen. And the reality is, God is who he is because he first of all speaks things and then these things come to pass. Everything recorded in the word of God or, or the things that we see were first of all recorded and then we, they came to be. So we are reading that which will be, though it has not been. So we as Christians or the Bible student, we are literally privileged because we know the future before even the future come into being. We are able to tell exactly how this world will end. Other people can speak about it, but there is no authority as great as the authority of the word of God. Because it is the word of God that has been proven to speak and those things to come to pass. God himself said, which other God is there in this world? Which God is there anywhere that can speak a thing and that thing come to pass? The only person who ever speaks a thing and it comes to pass is none other than the Lord God Almighty. The Lord God, our Father, who is also the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. And it is Him who has given us His Word. And it is Him that we glorify. And so He has given us the book of Revelation. It is difficult to understand sometimes when you read it. But as we begin to dip deeper and deeper, we begin to understand a line there, a line there, a precept, a precept. We begin to get the whole concept. We begin to see the whole picture. And finally, we will see the whole revelation. Hallelujah. 
so it is good to be a student of the word of God. It is good to see because the people, when you read the Bible, because the Bible was there before Jesus even came, you could see the things that were fulfilled by his coming, the things that have been spoken by the prophet, and the things that have come to pass even since Jesus was here that have been prophesied, and the things that are continuing to happen. We are living truly in that age where we can see the whole thing that is recorded in the book of Revelation can be able to take place. We saw how the Bible tells us that when this Antichrist, this anti-God, this anti-Jesus Christ, this child of the devil that will manifest himself in this world, when he comes, he will make people not to buy or to sell. When those things were recorded, it looked impossible. We saw how, but today, it is very possible. All they need to do is to use your bank card and close it. Use your method of payment because today we no longer use much of the cash. You know, many places if you want to buy things, you don't go with cash, you go with just a credit card. You can do electronic transfer. Many people, they don't even see money. They just know money have entered into the account and they are able to transact. Other people, they use their phone. The money comes to their phone. They never see the physical money, but they are able to transact. And now we can see that the time we live in, it is very probable for someone to be stopped right at their path not to be able to buy or to sell unless they have the mark. So we can see that the, when we read also about the two witnesses, how that the world were to celebrate and to allow them, once they are killed, not to, to be buried, and they were celebrating all over the world, that they could see them lying in the, in, in, in the street of Jerusalem. You know, when those things were recorded, it seemed impossible, you know, if somebody read that, he would not be able to tell how will the whole world be able to see. But today we know very well, nothing can happen in any corner of the world. All of us, all over the world, we are able to see, we are able to be partaker, to, to understand what is going on. We are able to have all the information, we are able to contribute, we are able to say things, you know. So today we live in a very interconnected world, that the world we live in, we can literally see the closure of this book of revelation we can see the fulfillment of everything nothing as it is recorded cannot be able to take place in the generation or in the times we live in so we are just very near right at the door for the manifestation of this so we have been we have gone through the seventh the, uh, judgment the seventh verse, and then now we saw the remembrance of this babylon last week we saw how this woman who writes on this beast which we identified as antichrist have been riding we identified this woman in type it could be wrong but now we are, but we know it will be greater because it is a great force that started all the way back in the days of the Bab uh, tower of Babel, where babylon began when men chose to literally do he thinks his way he decided to be his own god he decided that he had chosen he can do things he can do things outside god and if he's gonna worship god he's gonna worship god in his own time but you can never worship the true god in your own time we must worship the true god in his time and his time is very simple it is so open the bible says, for god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but should have eternal life and the bible also continues to say whosoever shall call upon the name of the lord jesus christ he shall be saved for with the with with the a man believeth with the heart into righteousness but with the mouth confession is made unto salvation god has invited every person to come to the saving grace of our lord jesus christ but Jesus himself have testified and witnessed, saying in the book of John that no man cometh to the Father except by him, for he is the way, the truth, and the life. No man can come to God unless through Jesus Christ. So God's way is so open that no man can come to him unless he comes through his son Jesus Christ. Because there is no any act of righteousness anyone can do that can qualify any one of us to come into the presence of God. Apart from that righteousness that comes from God, which is by faith in the Son of the living God, even our Lord Jesus Christ, that is the only qualifying righteousness that allows us to stand guiltless 
in the presence of God, to be accepted as the beloved of God when we come through Jesus Christ. And the invitation is open to every person. It doesn't matter which corner of the earth you live in. It doesn't matter which crime or which sin you have committed. If only you can acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord. If only you can acknowledge the works that he did on that cross, that he did it on your behalf, then you will be saved. And that's the only method. So it is a simple method, but man seems to ignore it. And so we continue remembering. So God here has remembered Babylon. And Babylon must be brought to judgment. Babylon, as it is known, it was it is one city. It was a city with that, uh, and it was also a country that took the children of Israel to captivity. We know how they took Daniel, Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego. How they led the king of Israel to to, to captivity. You know, and 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 but they were prophetic war of the destruction of this Babylon. Last week we read it, maybe we can read it again in Jeremiah 51, but before we do that, may we just pray as we begin the service. Father, we thank you so much for the privilege of being called by your name, for the privilege of knowing you through our Lord Jesus Christ, for the privilege of being forgiven of our sins when we confess Jesus Christ as Lord, for the privilege that we can become your children, O oh God, and we can have a relationship with you. We have the privilege of receiving the Holy Spirit through Jesus Christ because you have forgiven our sins. For the privilege of the word of God that you have so graciously gifted to, to the world so that we may know your mind, we may know your way, and we may be able to comprehend and understand the plan of God. We honor you, Heavenly Father. Even as we open the scripture today, I pray that you may open our mind and our thought line, and our way of life may be influenced by the scripture so that we may comprehend God's will and we may do God's will to the glory of your name. In Jesus' name, amen. Let us read uh, Jeremiah, first of all, 51, and we see the prophetic word because we are in the midst where Jer uh, uh, Babylon is being remembered for final destruction. We know currently Babylon has been destroyed. Babylon was situated about uh, 90 kilometers from the current uh, nation of Iraq, their city, the Baghdad. That was their headquarter because a uh, Babylon capital was that uh, Iraq place. Actually, in the days of the heydays of this great president of Iraq, it's known as Saddam Hussein, even he had made a coin of himself in one side and Nebuchadnezzar on the other side. So the Babylon is still celebrated by the people who celebrate Babylon. Actually, he was he had purpose to restore the glory of Babylon, but he did not succeed. He was destroyed because the time had not come anyway. So the Bible reads in Jeremiah 51, Thus says the Lord, Behold, I will raise, raise up against Babylon and against them that dwell in the midst of them, that rise up against me a destroying wind, and will send unto Babylon furnace that shall fan her and shall empty her land. For in the day of trouble they shall be against her round about. Against him that behead, behead let the archer bend his bow. Against him that lifted himself up in the brigade and spare ye not the young men. Destroy ye utterly all her hosts. Thus the slain shall fall in the land of the Chaldeans, and they that are thus thrust through her in the street. For Israel has not been forsaken, nor Judah of his God, or the Lord God of hosts, through their land was filled with sin against the Holy One of Israel. Flee out of the midst of Babylon, and deliver every man his soul. Do not be cut off in her iniquity, for this is a time of the Lord's vengeance. He will render unto her recompense. Babylon has be, been a golden cup in the Lord's hand that made all the earth drunken, and the nations have drunk of our wine, therefore the nations are mad. Babylon is destroyed, uh, is suddenly fallen and destroyed. Call for her, take balm for her pain, if she may be healed. We would have healed Babylon, but she is not healed. Forsake her. And let her go, everyone, 
into his own country for her judgment reaches unto the heaven and is lifted up even to the skies the lord has brought forth our righteousness come and let us declare in zion the work of the lord our god hallelujah so god had purpose even during the time of the captivity of the children of israel remember they stayed in babylon for 70 years but in the midst of that time of course babylon was overthrown by the mendes you know but they stayed there for those 70 years as captive and in that time of their captivity they were literally molested you know we read in psalms maybe we can read it again psalms 137 how bad it was for the children of israel for the people who believed god when they went to captivity and they sang this song psalms 137 by the leaders of babylon there we sat down yea we wept when we remembered zion we hung our harp upon the willows in the midst thereof for they that carried us away captive required of us a song and they that wasted us required of us a mean saying sing us one of the song of zion how shall we sing the lord's song in a strange land so the people of god they remembered zion as they are they remembered babylon or babylon is remembered as a as a nation or as a city where they were oppressed because they came they destroyed them they, it is this Nebuchadnezzar who destroyed the temple of God in Jerusalem. You know, it was literally impossible to penetrate uh, to penetrate uh, uh, Jerusalem. Maybe we can read the book of Lamentation and see what the Bible says. Lamentation chapter 4. Lamentation chapter 4 and verse 12. This is what the Bible says. The kings of the earth and all the inhabitants of the world would not have believed that the adversary and the enemy should have entered the gates of Jerusalem. For the sins of our prophet and the iniquity of our priests that have shed the blood of the just in the middle of Israel, they have wandered as blind men in the street. They have polluted themselves with blood so that men could not touch their garment. So Jerusalem, it was impossible to penetrate it. Even the kings of the earth knew that. But Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon came and not only did he take them captive he destroyed the temple of God he burned the temple of God and he carried the vessels of God from Jerusalem to Babylon and when they went to Babylon his grandson Belshazzar he asked for those things from the temple of God and he drank wine with his concubine they defy the things of God. And so, the Bible says their time come. God is the avenger. We are in the book of Revelation. In chapter 17, when we were ending, you know, when we were ending the, sorry, 16, when we were ending the, the, the vial, the seventh vial, in nine, verse 19 of chapter 16 of Revelation, the Bible says, and the great city was divided into the three parts, of course, after the earthquake, and the great Babylon, came in remembrance before God to give unto her the cup of the wine of the fierceness of his wrath. You know? And last week we began to open when we saw this woman who was riding on this beast, which of course we realized is the one who carried by the Antichrist as this world now is seduced and have been literally been carried and the world has become the current Babylon. You know where people worship themselves. People worship money. People don't care about God. They think about themselves. It is a materialistic world that we live in. And so in chapter 17, we saw the spiritual aspect of Babylon. But chapter 18, we'll begin to see the economic aspect that also have to be destroyed by God. So chapter 18 of the book of Revelation, we begin and we read. And after these things, I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power, and the earth was enlightened with his glory. Wow. God has great angels. Hmm? One of these angels, the Bible says, he's so great, he's full of power. There are people who think this is Jesus Christ. No, on the contrary. God has mighty angels, but he is mightier than his angels. Hallelujah. 
Even we know very well that when the Son of God comes in the new Jerusalem, in the new earth, there will be no sun or moon because the light of God and His Son, they will lighten the whole world. There will be no darkness, there will be no night nor day. Every time there will be the light of God. And so we can begin to see here in type that even the angel, the right of an angel, one great angel, his glory lightens the whole earth. Hmm? Now you can imagine the glory of God. Because the glory of God is greater than the whole combined glory of all the angels of God. The light of God that illuminates from his glory is more brighter than all his angels combined. That's why we must learn to fear God. Because the one that serve him are so great in power. They are so great. You can imagine if this angel was to appear before you. You just die instantly. Because of that brightness of his glory. So the Bible said this angel who was appeared. The, the, the Bible said he cried mightily with a strong voice. Saying Babylon the great is fallen. If there is one thing the heaven is waiting. Is for the fall of Babylon for the fall of this war because Babylon today you know the scripture is associated with will sin it is the headquarter of sin it is where men began to rebel in Genesis when you saw the Tower of Babel and Nebuchadnezzar took it to another phase when he literally even could destroy the temple of the living God where he could boast that no one could do him any harm if anything God humbled him to show him there was one but you see even he made this statue in Daniel chapter 3 and he made all the nations of the world to worship when they had music to bow down to his, to his statue to define God you know if you want to define God it is when you direct your worship to another because there is only one person one to be worshipped and that is the living God even when you read the book of Revelation, you will find John when he sees these great angels trying even to bow and they say, no, you can't do that. You must worship God only. There is only one who is to be worshipped. And that is the living God. So the Bible tells us here that this great angel, he cried because the heaven is waiting. If there is a day the heaven is waiting, it's for the destruction of the system of this world. If there is one thing we are waiting as believers, is for Jesus Christ to come and to establish the kingdom of the living God. So he cried saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and is become the habitation of devils, and the hold of every false spirit, and the cage of every unclean and hateful bird. So Babylon is controlled by demons. You know, the, 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 any other worship that there be that is not of the true God through Jesus Christ, it is a habitation of devils. And you know what? All the nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication, and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, and the merchants of the earth are works rich through the abundance of her delicacy. So, Babylon control this spirit. Control the kings of the earth. The way people do things. The commercial way. The merchant of the world. They, 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 they don't fear God. The people have lifted materialism even above God. People even seek God to think that they just need God for material reason. Not worshipping God for who he is. That's how serious the spirit of Babylon is, but it will fall. It will fall. I heard another voice from heaven saying, come out of my people. God does not want to be part of this system of Babylon. So he says, I heard another voice from heaven says, come out of her, my people, that you may not be partakers of her sins, and that you receive not of her praise. For her sins have reached unto heaven, and God has remembered her iniquities. Remember this 
will be climaxed during the days of the Antichrist. Because you see, we saw how this woman have been carried these many years by the spirit of Antichrist. But when the Antichrist come, they will work together for a time. But we saw how they will turn against the woman because there is only one during that time who will want to be worshipped. What the enemy have always desired to be worshipped. And he will force the people of his that time of the seven year tribulation, the next half, to worship him. Because the Bible says he will go to the temple of God. Just like Nebuchadnezzar came and destroyed, now he will go to the temple of God. And he will sit there as God. That's why the Bible says we must come out of this system. We must come out of it. We, we must learn to Jesus. We must come to the saving grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Because her sins, this sin, these ways that are contrary to God's way, God has been patient. God has been his wrong suffering, not wanting anyone to suffer, but the time is coming when everything will be brought to a closure. And the sins of Babylon, this wicked force that divert man away from God to materialism, to, to worshipping of idols, to worshipping of money, to worshipping of self, it will be brought to an end. Then verse 6 says, Reward her even as she has rewarded you and double unto her, according to her works in the cup which she has filled to her double. How much she has glorified herself. She lived deliciously so much torment and sorrow give her. For she say in her heart, I sit as queen. I am no widow and shall see no sorrow. Therefore shall her plagues come in one day, death and mourning and famine. She shall be utterly burned with fire for the strong is the Lord who judges her. This woman that is being carried by the spirit of Antichrist, misreading the whole world, this religious system that also have inflated and guided men into corrupting themselves in the materials of this world, so that they don't glorify God and they don't honor God for what God has given unto them. Though God has revealed what may be known of, of him, but men have chosen to do contrary. That in the book of Romans says that though they know what was right, Yet they delight and they even clap and, re and, and glorify them who do wrong. That's the spirit of Babylon. That's the spirit that controls the religion of this world. That controls the kings of this world. The spirit that now works, we saw that last week, in the sons of disobedience, according to Ephesians chapter 2, which once before we came to Christ, we all conduct ourselves through that power. For no man can escape. You can only escape through Jesus Christ. But the judgment is coming. And so there is an invitation for God's people to run away. We need not to be consumed. We need not to be carried away by the spirit of Babylon. We need to resist the power of Babylon. Even when Nebuchadnezzar in his days, he said that people should bow. There was those who re re revered him not. And they revered, they revered God and they resisted the force that was as powerful as he was, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They did not bow. Though they were punished by being thrown into the furnace of fire, that's how dangerous this spirit is. It does not really take no for an answer. But glory be to God who is able to deliver his people. But as Daniel, as Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego said, even if he doesn't deliver us, we will still not worship, neither will we bow to the gods of Babylon, to the statues of Babylon, to that which is contrary to the ways of God. Because God we know he will come to judge. God may be delayed, but the time is coming. The Bible says, verse 8, okay, we have, we, okay, verse 8, God says, He strong is the Lord who judges her. Verse 9 says, and the kings of the earth who have committed fornication and lived, lived deliciously with her shall behold her and remind for her where they shall see the smoke of her burning. You see, though they be controlled by the spirit that, of course, we identify to be from Rome, you know, the current setting where we are, though it will be magnified into a bigger a bigger thing because Rome is just the type 
as currently ruling the the one point something billion Christians in the world and guiding the world in her direction. But the time is coming when it will grow so big. When the uh, when the false uh, the false prophet, of course, we know the false prophet. We spoke about him. He will have risen here, and the whole world will be carried away. But then suddenly the Medes, when the Antichrist stands that they should be worshipped, the woman will be destroyed. And the person that have, of course, related with her, the kings of the earth, they will be mourning when they see the destruction, yet they can do nothing because of the power of the Antichrist then, which of course is God, as we read in chapter 17 last week, verse 17, it says, God has put in their heart to fulfill his will. Right? So it is God judging but using the same powers to judge it to judge themselves hallelujah and verse 10 says they stand afar off for the fear of our torment says aras aras that great city babylon that mighty city for in one hour is the judgment come and the merchants of the earth shall weep and mourn over her for no man buy their merchandise anymore the merchant merchandise of the gold and silver and precious stones and pearls and fine linen and purple and silk and scarlet and all thy wood and all manner of vessels of ivory, all manner of vessels of most precious wood and brass and iron and marble, and the cinnamons and others and ornaments and frankincense and wine, oil, fine flour, wheat, beasts, sheep, horses and chariots and slaves and souls of men that's how far they have gone that one of the things in the market in these religious settings of the world is the souls of men and the fruits that the, that thy soul lasted after are departed from thee and all the things which were dainty and goodly are departed from thee and thou shalt find them no more at all the merchants of of these things which were made rich by her shall stand afar off for fear of her torment, weeping and wailing, and saying, Alas, alas, that great city that was clothed in refined linen and purple and scarlet and decorated with gold and precious stones and pearls, for in one hour is so great riches is come to mount. And every shipmaster and all the company in the ship and the sailors, and as many as traveled by sea, stood afar off and cried when they saw the smoke of a burning saying what city is like of this great city and that when they cast down that they cast dust on their head and cried and weeping and wailing saying aras aras that great city wherein were made rich all that hardship in the sea by reason of a coastline for in one hour she is made desolate God is able to judge that which looked so big, so great in one hour. He's able to destroy. We must fear God because God is a judge. And verse 20 says, Rejoice, O heaven, thou heaven, and ye holy, sorry, rejoice over her, thou heaven, and ye holy apostles and prophets, for God have avenged her, avenged you on her. And a mighty angel took up a stone like a great milestone and cast it to the sea, saying, Thus with violence shall that great city Babylon be thrown down and shall be found no more at all. By the way, even as it is currently, the great city that Nebuchadnezzar had built is no more. It is a waste. But this we speak of the last day as a spiritual context that this great Babylon, as it is prostituted during the time of the Antichrist, it will be destroyed because it will be the climax. Hallelujah. And verse 22 says, And the voice of harpers and musicians and pipes and trumpets shall be heard no more at all. Indeed, no craftsman of whatever, whatsoever craft he shall be, shall be found in any more in thee. And the sound of the milestone shall be at no more at all in thee, and the light of the candle shall shine no more at all in thee, and the voice of the bridegroom of the blind shall be heard no more at all in thee, for thy merchant were great men of the earth, for by thy sorceries were all the nations deceived. So we see this great Babylon 
she operates with sorcery because they don't operate by the spirit of God. They operate by the spirit of divination. They operate by the spirit of sorcery. It's not of God. That's why we must learn to Jesus Christ. That's why you must come through Jesus to the Father because it is only through the Father that we are able to embrace eternity through Jesus Christ. And verse 24, as we close, it is raining too much outside. The Bible says, And in her was found the blood of the prophet and of the saints and all that was said upon the earth. Hallelujah. So you see, the blood of the prophet and of the saints and all that were upon the earth was found in this great Babylon. But God will avenge for his servant the blood of the martyrs the blood of the saints, the blood of the prophet, the blood of the apostles, the blood of God's people will not go, will not fall down in vain. God will avenge for them. God will avenge for his namesake. God will, will be feared all over the world because God is the one who judges and he is ready to judge this great war, this great Babylon. It will be brought to nothing. Let us come out, as the Bible says, come out of her, my people, that you may not share in her sin. Let us look unto Jesus, and we shall be saved. Let's call upon his name, and let us walk with him. Let us relate with Christ, and not Babylon. Let us stand like the four Jews too. Even in the city of Babylon, when they were carried captive, Daniel, Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego, they chose not to defile themselves. They could not even eat the meat that was served from that great king Nebuchadnezzar. They chose the ways of God. They chose not to defile themselves. You could be in this world and you can choose not to be defiled. You can choose to follow Jesus wholeheartedly and not to be corrupted by the city and by the spirit of Babylon. Let us choose the ways of God. Let us choose the righteousness that comes by God. Let us choose Jesus Christ to be Lord and to be our Savior. Let us become his true disciples by following each his footstep on a daily basis to the glory of God. As you make that decision of completely breaking yourself away from Babylon, so you may be in this world, yet you are not of this world. May God give you the grace. May God give you the strength. May God bless you. May God make his face to shine upon thee. I want to sign up because, of course, we are coming to the end of 18, but also there is too much rain that is pouring and um, finding others are not hearing. May God bless you and keep you and make his face to shine upon thee. Until next time, cheers!